Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Sohini from South Bay, California and I welcome you today. I'm hoping everyone is keeping safe. So last week I, I released a video and that was on career coaching and I have been getting a, a lot of comments and feedback about uh, we know what are the interview steps or um, what are the next steps that, that people should be aware of when it comes to you know job interview process especially for the machine learning domain and along with that I have been getting some questions on a specific video that I'll be linking up top right now and that one I had actually created on image semantic segmentation using uh, unit that's a particular model uh, but that in that case I was using uh, the library tensorflow one you know one X and uh, the data set in most cases what I found uh, for whatever the you know most of the code bases that are out there are actually on data sets that are not open that are not publicly open to the to everyone to try out so what I decided to do was to merge both of them into one video and that's the video for us today so in this video I will be showing you two things first I will be showing you an example of a good github repo so and a good strong github repo is extremely important right now to make the cut in order to get a job interview for machine learning roles I will show you exactly you know how to structure it how to organize it and it, in order for the recruiters to actually give it a, a you know go and then have you you know nominate you for a call with the hiring manager so uh, today is about github and the second thing uh, I wanted to show you is how to use unit on tensorflow 2 so now I've been using tensorflow 2.0 where Keras has actually been rolled into uh, under uh, you know tensorflow so what I wanted to show you is using tensorflow 2.0 or actually uh, you know Keras applications how can you build a unit which is end-to-end -end? so in, in the in the current github repo I'm actually using a public domain data set that is available to all so anybody should be able to replicate it and benchmark it and if this is of interest to you please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel all right so this is the github repo that i was talking about this is actually my github uh, account and i have three different uh, repos that i've already submitted uh, this explainable end-to-end -end, uh, underscore org this is actually explainable um uh, explainable ai and and i'll link the uh, you know the, the video series that i uh, you know made corresponding to it but today i wanted to talk about this one it's called unit uh, using tf2 and so what, what it is doing is it's it's applying uh you know unit model for semantic segmentation so it's an encoder and, and decoder uh, model but it is built using uh, tensorflow 2 so this is how the the whole uh, you know github example looks like um notice one thing that uh, as soon as you, as you get in is you know it tells you exactly what the what you're what somebody should expect when they are going over a github repo such as this uh, i already have a video series that that i've already linked here and um parts of this paper actually uh, correspond to 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 a, a paper so so that you know i've linked that as well so if you have any corresponding publications or or anything that you can link your your work to you should try to do that now uh, the first steps in order to replicate this work so um, library requirements so what was you know the, the part of the uh, all the different libraries that I was using so that you can replicate exactly uh, the, you know the environment so I always like to create environments in in Python in order to uh, do my coding so what I actually have is this YML file so if you're using something like binder or somewhere else where you want to replicate uh, you know the environment settings then this would be the best way for you to do that so um, that's why I, I'm, I'm providing the environment.yml file for you otherwise you don't really need to get into the nitty-gritty all you need to know is you need to have tensorflow 2x so I'm calling it 2x because it could be 2.2 my exact version is tensorflow 2.2.1 so now the training uh, and the test data like i mentioned the previous versions were not as compatible because um you know the the training and test data sets they were closed off so you couldn't really um see uh, you know the the performance or, or you couldn't really benchmark them but now uh, i'm using the stair data set and again this this data set is pu is publicly available this is the data set i'm talking about so it has 20 retinal uh, pathological images so um you know what you should do is you should definitely you know download the images and then uh, the, the labels that have been generated from it as well 
and then unpack the data in, in a certain way. So you have the training uh, and the images and, and, and the ground truth. What I wanted to do here is uh, if you look at the at the at the original data set, uh, it shows it's it's just got 20 images. It doesn't really you know separate the images as you know these are the ones for training and these are the ones for test. So for this particular example, what I did, I used 10 images to train and 10 images to test. So imagine it is a, a unit model. So it's a deep learning model, which is training from 10 images only. So that is extremely sparingly amount of, of data. But of course, we use a huge amount of image data augmentation in order to get that. And uh, you know the main uh, file. Uh, what I've seen in in, in a lot of uh, you know existing UNET repos is uh, it, it it's generally always a library, right? So so you have a lot of helper functions and you have a lot of he helper files. Uh, but in in most cases that can can become confusing. So I wanted to wanted this example to be as easy to understand as possible. So the only code that you require is this Jupyter notebook. And that's all you need. So all the helper functions, everything is in that one Jupyter notebook. So if you just follow the instructions, which is in your Jupyter notebook, you should be able to understand it all. I wanted to mention one thing about uh, these code repos uh, that are super important is, of course, they, they need to look as uh, authentic as possible and as complete as possible. But uh, the one more thing that actually a lot of recruiters look at is commits. So here you see that I have about 22 commits. Um, so ideally, what uh, recruiters will do is they'll go to these 22 commits and they'll see what you have committed at every single time because these are commits made by you. Correct. Um, so, how many times you've actually, you know, made changes? Do you even know what that means? Have you, you know, merged the, the branches as required? So, to recap, things that you require for a good GitHub repo is again, it should be as complete as possible. People should be able to replicate it because you know you should give them the requirement files. Um, uh, then it, it should definitely have the code explained in in as good way as possible, and also it should have some amount of results for people to to get a quick gauge as to have you know do you actually um, have you know done something there. And finally, uh, the commits should have a clean history. All right. So these are the pointers for you to have a good, strong, solid GitHub repo. Now let's get into the unit, uh, the, this code, the, the Jupyter notebook uh, that I was talking about. So this, the original code base is, is actually from a, another, uh, you know, a GitHub repo. Always remember, you need to not plagiarize. So if you know you have, uh, you know, taken some some amount of snippet of code from somewhere else, you should definitely refer to that document or say, you know, that this part was taken from from something else so this is motivated from the original repo which is uh, you know in this particular uh, location however uh, the, the previous version was on tf1x so tensorflow 1 uh, but now whatever you're seeing again uh, all of it is in tensorflow 2 and it's on the stair data so first of all again uh, the first process uh, step number one is to load all of the libraries and this is where i'm actually defining the unit model now remember this is a unit model of depth four which means that there are encoders and decoders that can go up to depth four so after every single convolution i'm I'm, I'm doing batch normalization, which is super important. In some cases, I've also added, uh, you know, dilation. So these are dilated kernels. So I'm trying to cover more ground, uh, you know, using a, a smaller kernel size. So uh, if you have questions about, uh, you know, dilated kernels or depth-wise separable kernels and how uh, you would want to learn about the differences, please leave me a comment and I can actually cover them in, in a video uh, later on. But yeah, in this case, I'm, I'm using, uh, you know, dilated kernels uh, for the first few layers. That's where uh, we are actually, uh, you know, getting the structural features. And the rest of it is pretty much straightforward. Even for the loss function, I'm using a binary cross entropy loss. And, uh, you know, accuracy metric is what I'm returning. Um, then I have a few functions that I've defined, and this helps for pre-processing of the data. So uh, there is this train data generator and this test data generator. So these are the pre-processing uh, functions, uh, and then there is some of the visualization functions, and I have laid you know laid them out uh, separately, and um, finally I have all these functions that are used to evaluate. 
so always remember to define good metrics in your uh, code base you know or, or your github uh, portfolio um so first of all like i mentioned we are trying to do extreme amount of deep learning because it's just 10 images to train from and so that's why we need a good data augmenter or a data generator um so that's these are the values that are, that we are using for it now this is uh, if you do 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 a model dot summary you now because it's it's a keras model you can definitely see uh, you know the the format so i'm i'm feeding in the images as 512 by 512 in this case so so next we just you know define two different checkpoints so one checkpoint is uh, for uh, one one callback is actually to uh, you know take all of the data or the loss functions that you're getting and put it on your tensor board and the other uh, model checkpoint is to save so whenever you're you're saving your uh, you know different steps in which the weights of of the model they can actually be saved to the model underscore checkpoint and uh, in this case what will happen is this is for the stair data set but let's say that now you want to modify uh, you know this this whole model for a new data set so instead of starting from scratch you can just upload you you can just start from these particular uh, weights that that has been generated out of the stair data set you know you know your model already knows some of the prior weights so convergence is generally faster so this would actually help you with uh, transfer learning and also faster convergence in case if the field of views of, of the images are, are, are pretty similar however if it's uh, because these are retinal images right so now if you're trying to retrain this for pedestrian detection these weights are not going to help a lot so in that case you might want to uh, you know train from scratch and again in order to visualize it um, i had the tensor board on and then this tensor board image is that's what i have put on the on the main readme file and then i just apply testing and finally i just uh, you know show the the performance i wanted to show you that in this case i'm able to get a precision of 75 uh, you know a recall of of 84% and f1 score of almost 80% so just using 10 images i am able to get an f1 score of 80 all right, so I wanted to show you some of the examples that I got for stair. So for for stair for the trade for the test images, this is what the outcomes were. And if you see, they're actually pretty high quality, right? So the the finer thinner blood vessels they were also captured. In this case, you do see that there's some amount of false positives, but again, it's just ten images that you train from by augmenting them heavily. So this would be an example of a well-made, uh, you know, GitHub repo. I'm hoping this gives you ideas on how to clean up your own repo and also to create repos in future. Uh, if you have any questions about the model itself or about the, or about, you know, how to ensure that you have a good, strong GitHub, uh, you know, re repository, please do leave me a comment and I would love to, uh, you know, work with you for uh, more such videos in the future. Have a good one.